Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Strange Fantasy. I'm Travis. Ashley here. And I'm Trey. We're the creators, writers, and producers of the show. We just wanted to take a quick second before diving into tonight's tawdry tale to let you know that if you like Strange Fantasy, be sure and show your love by subscribing, downloading, and rating the show on iTunes, or any of the many platforms we exist on. And for exclusive rewards and merchandise, or just to donate to our cause to help us to continue to thrive, be sure to visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange fantasy. Also be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram by searching Strange Fantasy Show for updates and haunting original art. All of this and more can be found at our website, strangefantasyshow.com. And now... Your feature presentation... To another regaling of strange fantasy. Obscure artisies meant to shock the nervous system and stir the very core of your soul. Tonight's tale is of impending death and the wishful longing for true love. When faced with mortality, one may feel a need to give everything away. In this first part installment of our trilogy entitled Until Death. Hello? Is someone there? Damn kids. Caitlin? That better not be you, I hear. I swear, young lady, if you're out of bed again, not only will I be informing your mother of your disobedience, but I'll also tell her about the cookie jar incident tonight. You wouldn't want that, right, Caitlin? Caitlin? Huh? Yes, Nurse Doris? Oh, uh, it's nothing. Go back to sleep, little one. I'm sorry I woke you. It's okay. Good night, Nurse Doris. Good night, little one. Pleasant dreams. Damn, I need to stop having a third glass of wine at night. (laughs) What a sucker. If she would tell mommy about the cookie jar, I'll tell her that you're drinking wine on the job. Now that kind of behavior will get nothing but trouble. Whoa! Where did you come from? A place where little children such as yourself are punished for lying and scheming against their protectors. Protectors? You mean Nurse Doris? She doesn't protect me. Doesn't she though? Are you not ill? Yeah. So what? You owe her at least a modicum of gratitude for watching over you. Obviously, I'm too young to know what molecule means, but if she's supposed to be watching over me, then how did you get in my house? I'm tricky. And fair enough, child. I haven't been summoned here to argue about the capability of your watcher. I 
am here because I heard your wish. You did? Of course I did. God sent you here to help me? God. God doesn't listen, but I do. And I've heard your cries for help. And so I'm here. Who are you? <laughs> I am many things. I mean, what's your name? Which one? Whichever one I would know. How about you call me... Friend? Okay, friend. I see you're reading a book. May I ask what the story is about? Sure. It's one of my favorite fairy tales about a princess who's sick like I am. And her true love, the prince, has to kiss her so she won't be sick no more. True love, eh? Sounds familiar. It does? Have you read it before? I've seen it before. You have? Like a real princess? Mm Mm-hmm. Now that I ponder back a bit further, She kind of reminds me of you. She does? How? Well, well, she was young. Only a few years older than yourself. And deathly ill. Also, much like yourself. Yes, I remember her clearly. How could I ever forget? You know... She made a wish, and I came to her, much like I am to you now. And did a true love kiss her, and they lived happily ever after? Sure. Could you tell me the story? I suppose so. Yay! And don't skip on on any details. I hate it when stories do that. Understood. Long ago, in a kingdom far away, There lived a very beautiful, yet very ill princess named Gwendolyn Malior. The princess's illness kept her sheltered and secluded away from the outside world. On this night, however, she cried out to the heavens, or to anyone who would listen. But little did she know that within the night, I was listening. How's she faring? I fear for the worst tonight, my king. A terrible shame. Oh, damn. God be damned. My only daughter, destined to die, was never having lived. With all due respect, your majesty, it may be full-hearted to damn God in the final moments of your only child's life. <laughs> I know, damn it all. I know. Please forgive me. I am weak. Father, is that you? Yes, my beautiful angel. I'm here. Father, I wish for you a maester destrine to leave me in peace. Incontestable. I refuse to leave your side. How can you refuse me, Father? It's a simple request to be left alone with my thoughts. Oh, I am so scared, Gwendolyn. I'm not prepared to say goodbye. I'm not saying goodbye, Father. I'm only saying goodnight. So be it. A moment of peace. I shall return to check in on you. I know you will, Father. I love you. And... and I you. Pardon me. If you need anything at all, my dear, I will be on guard outside of your door. Thank you, Maester. Of course, Princess. Why, Lord, why me? (laughs) I have lived with this cursed life at your mercy, and I have asked for nothing, yet here I lay in my deathbed surrounded by nothingness. No companions for which I have grown alongside, no mother to console my fears, for you had mine to take her from my father and I. No love to quell my desire of a life lived in purpose. All I have is the stillness of the night air, and a sullen father that awaits the news of my passing. 
Maester Destrian firmly believes that you act with intention, and I should be grateful for the love of my father, of which I am. However, I cannot fathom the reason for your intentions. The thought eludes me into thinking you have no thought to your actions. My life must have fallen from your reasoning and become misplaced. Otherwise, why me? I just... I just want to live. Give me that chance, please. And if not, please give the smallest resemblance of another's love and affection. Let my true love hold my hand if I am to die. Please, Lord. That is all I ask in my final moments. True love, eh? <gasps> Where did you come from? <coughs> Some place far from here. I believe I can help you, my dear. Who are you, stranger? How did you get in my chambers? My name is not important, child. I have come to help you. You are a stranger in the princess's chambers. You could be executed for such trespasses. Are you aware of this fact? <laughs> I am aware of all things. I demand you, leave me at once or I shall scream for the gods to seize you. Dearest Gwendolyn, did you not make a wish? And did you not beg for it to be granted? How long have you been listening in on me? Your entire life. I've heard all your wishes, and yet your pleas have fallen upon deaf ears until now. Why until now? Now is the time of your final moments. For me, it means more. Are you him? Perhaps. I am many. You're the Dark Lord, are you not? <laughs> Perhaps. I, I would like... For you to consider me the answer. Why should I trust you? You never had a reason to trust in God. Yet you follow blindly like the others. Here I am before you, a living amalgam of truth and light. I am offering you the chance your heart has always yearned after. I can give you the life I pulled directly out of your dream. A chance for true love. Do you not desire this to become real? I do. More than anything. Then allow me to grant you your wish. Is... Is this real? It can be, my child. Take my hand, and so it shall be. You promise I'll have my true love? Yes. And you will have life. Now, now, now. give me your hand, good child, good. Repeat after me. I am willing. I am willing. I am empty. I am empty. As above, so below. As above, so below. Good child, now remain still. Hear me now, flaming of the candlelight. Eclipse the moon and ignite the sun. Burn the stars from their heavens and rain light down upon thy heart. We love a true can be reaped for one sun and one moon. Darkness shall rise and carry you down to the eternal sleep. Thy wish be granted and alive. You will become so it is done. <laughs> Is that it? That is it. 
did I hear you correctly that when I find my true love, I will only have a day and a night? Your ears do not deceive you, my child. Just as you wished, you will live until you find your true love. One sun and one moon shall balance. However, I will be the one to hold your hand once again as you die. That's not what I wish for. You deceived me. Nothing is ever as it seems, foolish child. And there is nothing without giving. Take. You get the chance to truly live and have love fill your heart. And I get your soul. <laughs> you foul demon. I would have never agreed to this deceit. I'd rather die now than to live a life in the shadows. I'm fully aware of what that has to offer. I fear it is far too late for you. The deed is done. You will be mine someday. And trust that I shall take great pleasure in devouring your innocence. <laughs> Now rest, now rest easy, easy my child. Tomorrow, Tomorrow is a new day. May God damn you. <laughs> He's gone. Oh. oh Lord, what have I done? Gwendolyn, where are you? Meister! Get in here at once! Yes, your majesty. Where is Gwendolyn? My lord? Where could she have gone in her state? What are you two looking for? My lord, it must be a miracle. How is it you are standing? Uh, and a very good morning to you, father. <laughs> yes. Yes, good morning, my child. Oh, I've missed your hugs, father. <laughs> I can barely wrap my arms around you anymore. I... I cannot believe this is real. This is an absolute miracle. An absolute miracle? Yes. H how are you feeling, my dear? I feel wonderful. Yes, you certainly look to be of a vinyl health. May I perform a few tests to better understand your recovery? Of course, Maester Distrian. Test away. If you would please be seated over here. Thank you, my dear. Follow your eyes with my finger. Very good. Now, take a deep breath in and exhale as much air as you can. <sighs> Very good. I must admit, I've never seen a recovery such as this before. Your fever is gone and any other signs of your illness have completely vanished, as if it had never afflicted you. An absolute miracle indeed. <laughs> you are cured, my dear. I know. Is this not the best, most wonderful day ever to be had? Yes, it is, my beautiful daughter. Maester Destrian, if you would please inform the rest of the kingdom that my daughter, the princess, is alive and well, and we shall have a joyous celebration tonight in her honor. Right away, your majesty. Oh, my lovely princess, just look at you. You look like I have always dreamed you would. An absolute vision to be held. I cannot express enough how happy I am. This illness has been cured. Now you can live your life as it was meant to be. Filled with loyalty and love. I wish your mother could have seen this day. She would have been so proud. <laughs> oh, father, you're such a very good man. I hope that one day... I will be so fortunate to find someone who loves as deeply as you do. Uh, yes, yes. <clears throat> Speaking of such, now that you are well, perhaps we could have a courtship prepared with the companion of your choosing. Perhaps we should not rush into such decisions just yet. I would like to simply live for now, to feel the sun's warmth the cool night winds and walk amongst the fields of nature. Of course, my daughter. Whatever you wish. 
It will be my command. Thank you for your understanding. Father, you truly are a great man. Come now, Gwendolyn. Let us walk together throughout the kingdom. I would like that very much, Father. One full moon and one full sun. My love of truth will be gone. The dark shall rise and I shall fall. Within my hand, I am small. Carry me into sleep. One full moon and one full sun. I take my love down into the deep. One full moon and one full sun. My love of truth will be gone. That is a very lovely melody you play. Oh, I'm terribly sorry if I've startled you. Please, do not stop playing on my behalf. Who are you? Does the crest I bear upon my chest not give away the answer? Yes, I can see you're with the kingdom, however... That was not my question, young knight. I asked who you are. Fair. I am Sir Wilbrook Chaucer of the King's Royal Guard. Chaucer? Is your father Sheriff... Brom Chaucer? Yes, he is my father. You've heard of him before. He is the King's Sheriff, is he not? Yes, in fact he is. May I ask for your name, miss? My name is of no concern to you, young knight. That is not very hospitable of you, miss. I have told you my name, now I would like to come to know yours. Hospitable? Look around you. We are in the King's Forest. There is no reason for me to display any hospitable kindness to you. Now, I do not wish to converse with you any longer, Sir Wilbrook. If you please leave me the way I was discovered, alone. I am a King's Knight, and we are within the King's Forest, so I should be shown some form of respect when spoken to. All I am requesting is to know the name of a very beautiful young woman whom I discovered playing a lovely melody to herself and to nature. <laughs> you do not give up so easily, I see. Being a knight for the king must have its rewards, otherwise any normal, respectable man would have honored the wishes of a beautiful young woman to leave her in peace. I apologize if I have offended you, miss. Your apologies hold no merit. Now please, take your leave of me at once. Yes, miss, I shall leave, after I have asked you one more question. <laughs> if it means you will leave, then fine. What is your last question? Where did you obtain this horse? What? This is my horse. This is one of the king's horses. Are you implying that I stole a horse from the king just to ride it out here so I could have a moment of peace? Are you admitting you stole this horse? I admit nothing to you, Sir Wilbrook. You have asked your question, now take your leave as promised. That was before I understood I was in the presence of a royal horse thief. I'm afraid you will have to come with me, miss. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with you, half-wit. I'm staying right here. Miss, I would like not to resort to more forceful methods. Now please gather your things and come with me. I'm placing you under arrest. <laughs> is this some sort of joke? It is not, miss. Let me tell you something, Sir Halfwit. If you so much as lay a finger on me, I will have you sentenced to death. Do you understand me? There you are, princess. Thank the heavens I found you. You're not supposed to run off, Lafa. Huh? What if something were to happen? And poor me not knowing where you are. Please don't frighten me so. I apologize, Gertrude. I will be sure to inform you of my whereabouts moving forward. Fine, fine. Come along, princess. Dinner will be prepared shortly. Oh, good day to you, Sir Wilbrook. Thank you for keeping an eye on her. 
Who knows what sort of trouble she will get into? Yes, not to worry. Looks as if you will have to arrest me some other time, Sir Wilbrook. Good day to you. Your Majesty. Princess? Oh, hello, Maester. Wandering around again? <sighs> yes, my mind is always wandering, so it seems my feet will follow on occasion. <laughs> I know the feeling all too well, my dear. You, you remind me of your mother right now, lost in thought as she paces back and forth. What is it you were pondering, my dear? Seems like everything all at once, as soon as I begin to have a clear thought, it becomes interrupted by another. <laughs> now you remind me of your father. I am fairly certain I have heard those words be uttered from his mouth on occasion. How does he overcome his wandering mind? Well, with countless practice and great strength. I, in fact, see a lot of him in your spirit. You will be a remarkable queen someday. Yes, this is one of my many thoughts weighing heavily on my mind. <laughs> Understandable, my dear. Inheriting an entire kingdom should absolutely be a burden on two dissenters. However, as long as you remain righteous and pure of heart, it will soon be realised how all things have a shape in which to fall in place. You are undoubtedly a wise man, and my family is very honoured and fortunate to have you in our lives. The honour is mine, your majesty. Do you remember much of my mother? Every moment of her presence holds a very special place within my thoughts. Was she scared when she died? In death, are we not all fearful? I suppose. Please be honest with me, Maester Destrian. Was she scared to die? Yes. Your mother was not quite prepared to leave this world when her time came. I recall she so desperately wanted to see you one last time before she left. However, your illness at the time was... Well, spreading more and more each day, and we could not risk moving either one of you. So, her last wish to see me was never granted? Unfortunately, no. Do you remember having your portrait painted? Yes, of course. How could I forget the pain of holding that pose for half the day? Yes, well, we had that portrait made so your mother could look upon your face once more. After we presented the painting to her, she said something I will take with me unto my own death. She said to me, even in death, I will see her beautiful face and I will know that I have made it home. I apologize, my dear. It's, it's not so easy for me to share these sort of feelings aloud. It's quite all right, Maester. Thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah, you are most welcome, my dear. Oh, oh, there, there. Thank you for the loving embrace, my dear. Sometimes I, f I forget one of the most powerful acts one can do for another is to offer a warm hug of comfort. Oh, come now, my dear. Let us seek out your father for dinner. Be sure our horses are prepared for the long travel ahead. Gods be damned if we lose any men or horses along the way. Father, what's happening? Are we going on a trip away from the kingdom? <laughs> I am. But you're not, my lovely daughter. But, Father, please, I want to accompany you and your men on the travel. Not this time, my daughter. I need you to stay here in my stead whilst I tend to my respective obligations of keeping the peace across the land. Where are you setting out for? If all is in accordance, then I am off to have Lord Skellen agree to the continued terms of peace between our kingdoms. That's great news, Father. I'm sure this will be one of your most successful journeys yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I shall return to you in three sunrises. Be safe. And mind Gertrude's directives. She is only watching after you. So do not be unkind to her. 
Yes, father. Just to add to your request, I'm nearly 20 years of age now. I'm not a little child who needs to be sought after from sunrise to moonrise. I'm perfectly capable of watching after myself. Uh, I know this to be true. My goodness, how time can pass in the blink of an eye. I'm a very fortunate father to have such a beautiful and strong-willed daughter. It is difficult to fathom how much you are growing into your own woman. Your mother... Would be proud. I know this to be true as well, father. Good. Now, mind your manners. Of course, father. I'll miss you whilst you're away. Oh, and please inquire if they still make those wonderful little sweets I remember fondly from my childhood. <laughs> I will make sure of it, my daughter. Please be safe. Do not worry, my dear. He will be returning before you know it. I know. It's always difficult to watch him leave, though. Fair spoken. <laughs> Love of truth will be gone. The dark shall rise and I shall fall. But within my hand, I'm small. Carry me into sleep with one full moon. Thought I might find you here again. You cannot be serious. It was Sir Wilbrook, correct? That is correct, and it is Princess Gwendolyn, correct? <laughs> Seems you are a fool not to be contested with. Wouldn't you say, Sir Wilbrook? On occasion, my foolishness is something to be inspired. <laughs> yes, I suppose it is. I wanted to apologize for my behavior in the past. If I had only known... Know what? That I was the king's daughter? Yes, your majesty. I would not have questioned you the way I did. You even threatened me with force, if I remember correctly. I yes, I am not proud of my actions, your majesty. Even if I was not the king's daughter, how you chose to handle the situation was far from that of a righteous knight. People have every right, just as anyone else. So they should be treated as such, with fairness and a kind heart. I understand, Your Majesty. I will adjust moving forward, and thank you for your courtesy in the matter. Yes, I suppose you are welcome. Now, what is it you have come to disrupt me about this time? And why are you not accompanying my father? And your father on their journey to the Second Kingdom. I was not required to venture out with them, and I just wanted to apologize, Your Majesty. Nothing more. Well then, you may take your leave of me, Sir Wilbrook. If I may say so, Your Majesty. I knew it. There's always something else when it comes to you. Moonrise will be here soon. If you are to stay here in the King's Forest, then I would request to remain here with you as a royal guard. <sighs> Fine. Just please stand a few paces back. If you are not to leave, then I wish not to be aware of your lingering presence. Of course, Your Majesty. Better, Your Majesty. Yes, and please do not speak again. I wish to also remain at peace with nature. Of course, Your Majesty. <sighs> Half wit. <clears throat> I take thy love down. Into the deep, one full moon and one full sun. My love of truth will be gone. The dark shall rise, and I shall fall. But within thy hand, I am small. Are you weeping, Sir Wilbrook? No, Your Majesty. Obviously, you are lying. I can see the tears dripping from your eyes. I, uh, I apologize. I've just... 
never heard such a saddening melody before. It has overcome me with sorrow. Well, I apologize. Sir Wilbrook, I did not mean for my song to cause you grief. It is not grief I feel, but rather a certain kind of sadness. Difficult to describe when I have never encountered such feelings before. Should I cease playing? Please, no. In fact, would you mind playing the melody again? <clears throat> With one full moon and one full sun I take the love down into the deep. Absolutely remarkable. I must say, I find your reaction to be quite peculiar. My apologies, Your Majesty. Quit apologizing to me. You have done nothing wrong as of yet to justify an apology. Right. <laughs> you want to apologize again, do you not? Feels like the right thing to do. <laughs> I cannot understand you, Sir Wilbrook. You remain unsolved to me. <clears throat> Yes, well, perhaps it is time for us to take our leave of the King's Forest. Darkness will be settling in soon, and the difficulty of these old horses seeing at night will certainly cause us to settle here amongst your beloved nature until sunrise. Ah, uh, understood. Let us make haste, then. Have you properly secured your riding straps? <laughs> I would like to make a wager, if I may. A wager? On what? Who can arrive back at the castle first? What say you? I do not think it especially wise to- Too late! Wager's been placed! See you there, halfway! Why, you little- Your Majesty, please, slip down! This is highly unsafe! Yeah, yeah! Well then, let the games begin! Oh, come on! Don't be a sore loser. <laughs> Come on now, you're just losing to a girl. Sore? <laughs> Looks as if I'm the victor. <laughs> so it seems. Good victory, your majesty. Oh, why so glum, Sir Wilbrook? I figured you of all people would know. Surprise always wins any wager on war. In this... You are correct. I did not see it coming. <laughs> Here, please. Allow me to assist you from off your horse. Thank you, Sir Wilbrook. Of course, Gwendolyn. <clears throat> I, I beg your pardon, uh, Majesty. I, I did not mean to speak to you with such familiarity. It is quite all right, Sir Wilbrook. No offense taken. Very good. I, 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 uh, I shall take my leave of you, Your Majesty. And I shall bid you a good night. Good night, Princess. Oh my, this cannot be good. What cannot be good, my dear? Hello, Maester. Oh, nothing of importance. Hmm. I'll take it from the dirt stained upon your dress. You are out having some fun. Yes, Maester. I made a wager with Sir Wilbrook that I would arrive first to the castle by horseback, and I actually won. <laughs> Wilbrook? Chef Tauncher's boy? In fact, it is Maester. At first, I thought of him to be this bumbling buffoon, incapable of seeing his own two feet. But now? But now... Now I am unsure of my feelings is... Is this what love feels like, Maester? <laughs> yes, I, I believe these are the early proceedings into love. Oh God, this is not good news. What? Why not, my dear? I thought this feeling is what you have always spoken about. <sighs> it is, Maester Destrian. I do not want to ever be released from this feeling, however, it frightens me nearly to death. Oh, my dear. You should not give in to these thoughts. Allow yourself to feel. Lord above knows that you deserve to feel this way. So why hold anything back? Fear is difficult to overcome. Yes. In fact, it is one of the most difficult challenges one will ever face. 
only the strong can defeat fear by believing that you are able. How? That is a thought I wish to never have to ponder, my dear. Now wash up, dinner has been set and is awaiting you in the dining hall. What would I do without you, Maester? I love you very much, Maester Destrian. And I you, my dear. Oh my goodness, I can hardly contain myself. Do you think Father was successful in his peace agreement with Lord Skellen? One can only hope, my dear. <laughs> ah, good day to you, Sheriff Brom. Good day, Sheriff Bron. Your Majesty, uh, Maester Destrian, may I please speak with you a moment in private? Of course, Sheriff Bron. Uh, thank you, Maester. Your Majesty. Oh, come on, Father, where are you? What seems to be the trouble, Sheriff? Who am I? You, you appear to be badly injured on your arm. Is everything all right? On our way to Lord Skellen's kingdom, our troop was attacked along the roadside. Attacked? Good heavens! What of the king? His majesty was one of the first to perish. Only myself and a few other men were able to escape with our lives. Oh my. This is tragic news indeed. The situation was out of your hands to control. You understand me, Sheriff? Please do not consider any of these past events to have been at your fault. Yes, Maester Destrian. I understand. Good, good. Oh, gods in heaven, our kingdom has fallen on dark times. Before you take your leave, let me ask you, are you able to identify any of the attackers? Somewhat. They were dressed as wild people, however, their attack formations were too precise. Mm. Most troubling. No apparent signs of lineage, then? None, Maester. That would do, Sheriff Brom. Thank you. You may take your leave. Thank you, Maester Destrian. I have yet to see Father ride right into the village. He is all right, correct? Mr. Destrian? My dear. If you would please come with me a moment. What about my father? I want to be the first thing he sees as he rides into the village. Princess, please. What is it, Maester? Why do you look so sad? I regret having to inform you of such unfortunate news, my queen. What did you call me? I fear it is true. What are you speaking of, Maester? Please, tell me what happens to my father. Where is he? They were attacked along the roadside of Skellen's kingdom. The king did not make it out of the battle. My father is dead? I'm, I'm so sorry, my dear. This cannot be true. Please, Maester. Well, make it all go away. Please, to bring my father back to me. I'm, I'm afraid there's nothing I can do to bring him back. I'm so sorry. There, there, now. Hush, hush. Everything will be all right, my dear. Hush now. Welcome home. Father, are you all right? My son. Father, you're beginning to frighten me. Tell me what's wrong. The king is dead. Oh, God. Thus concludes tonight's strange fantasy. Tune in next time for part two of Until Death. 
Strange Fantasy presented Until Death Part 1 Written by Travis Scarborough and Ashley Scarborough Produced by Ashley Scarborough, Travis Scarborough, and Trey Gonzalez Original score by Travis Scarborough The players of tonight's tale are as follows Ashley Scarborough as Princess Gwendolyn Mallier and Nurse Doris Travis Scarborough as Maester Destrian and the Dark Lord Heath Allen as Sir Wilbrook Chauncer Trey Gonzalez as King Francis Mallier Martina Olhauser as Caitlin and Gertrude And Michael Song as Sheriff Brom Chauncer Strange Fantasy Show was created by Travis Scarborough and Trey Gonzalez Strange Fantasy is copyright 2019 Strange Fantasy Productions All Rights Reserved All characters appearing in this work are fictitious. Any resemblance to real persons living or dead is purely coincidental.